to seeing you during future medical university king george's medical university lucknow for the next 12 minutes uh, dr chaudhary please a very good afternoon to all of you uh, today the task given to me is to talk about the calcified coronary lesions how to navigate the maze so 95% of the time the road is greener but many times it can be rocky and bumpy so it is holding true for the coronary interventions as well now as the population is growing as the longevity is increasing the more and more elderly patient and more complex cases are being handled by intervention cardiologist so up to 5% of the cases we may have to deal with this achilles heel of intervention cardiologist that is calcium so why it is problematic because the calcified lesions are difficult to dilate they are prone to dissection they may prevent stent delivery to the desired location can prevent adequate expansion hence a nidus for the stent thrombosis and may result in a stent malposition so these are the various factors that we are not comfortable with so uh, angiographically conventionally we say if the calcium is seen on just still frame and tram tract type of calcification usually on the both sides it is severe and it can be moderate also seen during the cardiac motions usually on the one side of the vessel but this we most of the operator will identify the severe but the problem is there with sometimes with moderate calcium because once you do angiogram with the five french tiger catheter by radial we may miss but once you take a guide you have planned the procedure you are going for pci and then you recognize that you are not able to get through your devices inside the coronary so many times this moderate calcium is more serious than severe because here we don't anticipate it and angiographically only 50% of the lesions can be identified otherwise rest of the cases you need a ivus or oct so this is just to show how does the calcium looks like so it is on the both sides the tight lesion is there so these are the lesions where we have to be careful so just getting few slides on intravascular imaging so this is how uh, ivus looks like most of the people are senior but for the fellows the ineal initial innermost layer is intima then it's a dark layer is media then after it's adventitia so for imaging i think the concept should be we should look for the very important things that we want to see because there is a lot of information we are confused some people do ivus some people do oct so resident and fellows see all these things so sometimes they are confused but for practical point of view in the last figure on the right most side we can see this is the central catheter is there and around it you can see a moon like bright structure so anywhere you see a bright structure on ivus it is calcium but now we have good modality like in the form of oct so we can see this a seed like structure that is between the two layers between intima and it has a regular margins so you can see it's like a seed embedded inside a coronary artery and on the right side you can see it's the same calcium that can be seen this asterisk this is post acoustic shedding so these are the two images of the same patient showing how does it look like in ivus and how does the calcium look like in oct calcium there is a study in this calcium can be detected up to 40% cases angiographically ivus scored over oct 82% compared to 76% so ivus is a good modality for moderate calcium and it's a bright hyperacute deposit with corresponding sharp edge acoustic shadowing now the people have come up with the superficial and deep also you can uh, if it is near to the catheter you are dealing it's a superficial if it is towards the adventitial it is deep calcium so superficial calcium means it is the calcium that is going to cause more problem and there are some indicators of superficial calcium Uh, on ivus there are some findings and there are some thin and thick also if it is thin you will get a reverberations around the catheter behind the this lesion if there are no reverberations then you are uh, probably dealing with the deep calcium thick calcium and it's a simple maths if it's a one sector then it is less than around 90 degree it can be nearer to catheter it is superficial if it is away from catheter it is deep so this is how you uh, quantify the lesion and if you can see a small moon arc it is mild calcium if it is more than 50% that means more than 180 degree then it is a moderate calcium and severe of course we have seen it's almost a circular structure so these are the two cases on the right side moderate or severe calcium where we have to look and we have to make use of adjunct devices and this is one of the patient on the right side uh, you can see there is a nodular structure at 
one or two o'clock. This is a calcium calcified nodule, and on IVAS you can see fluoroscopically we may see it's a mild to moderate, but you see it's a bright structure near this IVAS catheter. So any this like protruding like structure, this is more notorious because here if you dilate the lesion aggressively, then this patient is prone for dissection and perforation. So we have to be cautious in the case in the case of hidden enemy that is calcium nodule. Now we are using a lot of OCT, so we should be aware what is the scoring system that can help because once you use this uh, score developed by Fujiona et al. few years back, if the angle is more, that means again more than 180 degree, you will give it a 2 points. If it is thickness is more than 0.5, you give 1 point and if the length is more than 5 millimeter, you give 1 point. And if this 4 or more, then you should go up front with the rotablation or adjunct calcium uh, devices. Because you will get an expansion of 97% if you use the, make use of this score, otherwise the expansion would be only 67% if you see a severe calcium and you don't make use of this score. So just I will simplify the algorithm. If there is a mild calcium, then go with the routine PCAI. You can uh, take use of the NC non-compliant balloons. And if there is moderate, if the lesion is uncrossable, that means you are dealing with some severe situation. So do you, we should take upfront rotablation or orbital atherectomy, which is not presently available, but is being regularly used from last seven, eight years in West. Or, but over uh, between uh, rotational or orbital, I think rotational atherectomy is good enough to deal most of the lesions. But if there is moderate calcium, then we could see if this score is high, then we should go upfront with lithotripsy or rotational atherectomy. But if the score is less between 1 to 2, means the arc is less than 180 degree or thickness is not more, then you can go with the high pressure balloons like N uh, OP and NC balloon or conventional NC balloons at higher pressure. And if you don't get a good breakage or expansion, then you can go ahead with the lithotripsy and other. Again to summarize this approach to make it more simple, if the calcium is mild, go with the non-adjunct devices. If it is severe, go with atherectomy straightforward. If Cathode is uncrossable, balloon, smallest balloon is crossable, then of course the rotablation would be our severe. But if it is moderate, you suspect a moderate calcium and on imaging you find many times you need to change the strategy. Because many times you will not be dealing with this severe, moderate. If the arc is less than 180 degree, then you can of course go ahead with this uh, non atherectomy like high pressure NC balloons. So initially for rotablation, there are two... Uh, whatever CK statements, one is North American statement led by Dr. Shamim Sharma, who is one of the, not one of the, he's the largest um, means, he used the maximum number of low tablation, he does up to 50 per month, 25% of his PCI. So, as per his statement, you should do five proctored case of low tablation. it is good enough, you can start the cases, and there is a recent Japanese uh, article, guidelines they say up to 50 you would be labeled as a junior RA operator after that once you have an experience of 50 cases you can switch over to more critical cases and you will be labeled as a senior RA operator so there is should be a middle path 5 10 cases proctored cases we can go with the from simple to complex so it's a case of a stable angina ejection fraction normal TMT strongly positive the same case I showed so in this for the sake of doing imaging you can see on the right side you can see the catheter is here, this tight lesion has a 360 degree calcium. So it is a simple lesion you can say because it is less than around 3 centimeter non tortuous non-RCA, it is LED. So these are the cases and with a gentle packing motion with rotablation you can make the bed and after that the higher pressure NC balloons can be used and end result is good. After two days implantation this is the final result. So in this we saw on angiography, we anticipated, we did imaging and we made use upfront use of rotablation. Once you go uh, after cases of few experience, you can take the complex cases like patient with LV dysfunction, ICMP, you can plan a bifurcation stenting. So this was the case which has a LED D1111 and borderline LCX lesion. LCX was uh, checked with FFR was normal. This was again a more than 150, 180 degree calcium. So in this, once you are doing a bifurcation, you should never wire the side branch. You should do rotablation, the main branch, because it can cut the side branch wire. So in this again, over the micro catheter, this rota wire was taken. And above, uh, over this, this gentle packing motion rota bar was used, 1.25 size.
and I'll not go into the depth of bifurcation mini crush stenting was done and this was the end result after doing FKBI. So in complex setting also the physiological imaging helped, the imaging of the lesion by IVS helped and the rotablation helped. So it's a combination of the modality. Now the third case, stable uh, unstable angina patient post PCI to L6 came up with residual disease in LAD. Global LV hypokinesis around 40%. So this was the angiogram. So many times on diagnostic you may miss, but once you engage the guide, you can see there is a tight lesion with proximal and distal calcium. So in this, we try to uh, put across uh, OCT across it and to see how the lesion looks. So we can see on the right side, there is a calcified lesion, almost 20, 270 degree with some new vessels at two o'clock. So it's a thick calcium. So once you calculate this score, angle is more, thickness is more, length is more. So then upfront we should go with the rotablation. So this is again routine. In such tight lesion we should cross with micro catheter, catheter over this rota wire should be taken and a gentle packing motion of the smallest bird size that is around 0.5 ratio of the artery should be taken. And this uh, was pre-dilated and uh, after that the, this was the Sometimes even after doing rotablation, you need to go with the high pressure balloons. So in this, NC was done and this was the result. So again in this, the planning was important and this was the end result. On the right side, we can see there is a well opposed stents and well expanded. Last case, this is a, a 50 year old female, recent and angina. So in this, this was the angiogram. This patient has critical LLA disease with some angulations. So some can say you can straight away go with rotablation, but many times imaging helps. So in this, uh, it was decided to do the imaging. So this OCT imaging was done. She had uh, some recent anesthesia angina, so some thrombus was also there. But of course, there was a lot of calcium and it was a tight lesion. For we have to use two to three catheters, uh, new OCT catheter were used to get across this lesion. So many times. Uh, in disrupt CAD study also for imaging catheter as well as IVL catheter insertion required a guide catheter extension. So many times to get the good image to do OCT, we may need guide catheter extension. So in this, this was the OCT image. You can see 270 degree of this uh, uh, calcium is there, bright intima. Uh, behind this is a, a low attenuated uh, structure with sharp border. So this is calcium. This is how it differentiates from lipid. Lipid is a vague structure which has no well-defined margins. So this is again, in this case, you can say the lesion is crossable. If it is non-crossable, you can go straight away with rotablation. But it was crossable. We were able to cr cross the imaging catheter, OCD catheter, and you can choose either of the things, rotablation or rhythmotripsy. So in this, 2.512 balloon was used in the proximal and the distant lesion. There was a lot of angulation. There was difficulty. This is the real problem with the IVL, that if you are not able to deliver this balloon, then we may not be successful. So in that case, again, we have to rely upon the rotablation. So post IVL, some fractures were seen and there was some dissection because for, to get the catheter, we had to dilate it also. And after this, the procedure was completed with two deaths. And after the implantation, there was some indentation and it was dilated with the high pressure balloon. And uh, this was the end result. But in this also, even if we get a 10-20% narrowing, so we should be comfortable with that. We should not chase that we should get a perfect result because up to 30% narrowing, it is called as a successful PCI. So just last slide, take home message. We should start for calcified cases. We should start from simple to complex ones. Initially discrete lesions, non-angulated, especially LED because circumflex should be the last to be dealt with because it has a more angulation. IVAS oblique OCT should be optimally utilized. If you are not able to pass a simplest of balloon, smallest of balloon, then don't go for imaging. Straight away go for rotablation. But many times you will find a calcium nodule because you are seeing a clean lesion, you are not able to get a stent across it, then means you are dealing with nodule. And in this, I think rotablation is the best to get rid of this nodule. And stent, uh, good expansion is always uh, obtained by this IVAS imaging. And now we have ultimate trial which has shown a reduction in the event also once you use imaging. And we should plan strategy either, either we are going to take rotablation upfront or as a bailout. So I think upfront use, there are some scores which has some recently come. Even on the angiogram you can predict where you need to go for rotablation upfront. 
and plat modification rather than debulking. That means the smaller sizes burr because over 70, 80 cases we have used 70% cases 1.5 burr and 30% uh, cases 1.25 and uh, there are only 2 to 3 cases where we needed to go above this. Thank you all for patience listening. Thank yeah, you. That's the time that we have. Thanks Dr. Gaurav for the wonderful talk. I, I have a question for you. Like uh, you said, uh, uh, even after rotablation for basically debulking or modifying the plug, uh, we use high pressure balloon dilatation. So what is your uh, experience with rota cut? You know, there is a strategy called cut, using cutting balloon after doing rotablation. Uh, are you uh, using that? Uh, actually, problems? this cutting balloon initially I would say w there was always written it should not be used in calcified lesion. But over the years there has been a trend that mild to moderate calcium can be dealt by this. Now we have a Wolverine with smaller cuts and all that. But once there is a deep calcium or thick calcium, it will not be able to cut because many times you will not, able, you will not be able to get the fissure there and you can, you can land up in difficulty. But in mild to moderate calcium, ultimately it is, it can be of use, but once what you are saying, rota, tripsy would have been more useful, which people are using nowadays, rather than uh, using rota cut. Because it is, I think, more of a hype of cutting balloon, because recently in few uh, cases, one to two cases, we have seen Wolverine couldn't do help, uh, couldn't help much. I think after rota tripsy can be used. Okay, no, after okay. rota ablation, like the lithotripsy is not available at I think the OPN time. balloon has got, uh, people are using OPN balloon. That is basically uh, a high pressure balloon. Yeah, OPN is very good. You can go up to 45 and many times it is rewarding. But I tell you, I have seen so many cases, live cases also, landing up in perforation. So we should be comfortable at up to 30% of narrowing. In routine PCI up to 20% narrowing, we should be comfortable. But if it is residual narrowing up to 30%, then we should be comfortable in calcified. And we have a good antiplatelets now, so we can rely on that. Okay, that's the time that we have, Mr. Chairman. We'll have to move on to the next presentation. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. We'll move on to the penultimate lecture of Cardicon 2022.